Greetings and welcome to the O-Level lecture series on factors and multiples. In today's episode, we'll be looking at prime numbers. The success criteria for today would be for students to be able to list out all the factors of any natural number, to list out all the prime numbers below 100, and to express a natural number as a product of its prime factors. Let's begin with a recap on the definition of divisibility. Divisible means to divide with no remainder. For example, 18 divided by 3 gives us 6 with no remainder. So we say that 18 is divisible by 3. However, if 18 was divided by 4, it would give us 4 remainder 2. We say that 18 is not divisible by 4. From the definition of divisible, we get the concept of factors. Factors of a number x would be the positive integers that x is divisible by. Factors are also sometimes known as divisors. For example, the number 18 is divisible by 1, 2, 3, 6, 9 and 18. These six numbers are known as the factors of 18. What about the number 30? Well, 30 is divisible by 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15 and 30. It has 8 factors in total. What about the number 17? Well, 17 is interesting. It only has 2 factors, 1 and itself. From these 3 examples, we can make 2 generalizations. First, that 1 is a factor of all positive integers. And 2, that every positive integer is a factor of itself. This brings us to prime numbers. Prime numbers are numbers that have exactly two factors, one and itself. In the earlier example, the factors of 17 were one and 17. Therefore, 17 is a prime number. On the other hand, numbers with three or more factors are known as composite numbers. In the example of 30, 30 has eight factors, hence 30 is a composite number. Let's check your understanding with checkpoint 1. Which of the following numbers are prime numbers? Pause the video here and give this question a good try. Let's check the answer. 29 and 41 are both prime numbers. They can only be divided by 1 in itself. 39 on the other hand has 4 factors, 1, 3, 13 and 39. 91 can also be divided by 1, 7, 13, and 91. Therefore, these two are both composite numbers. In activity 1, can you determine how many prime numbers are there below 100? Try listing them out and counting them. Pause the video here and give this question a good try. A way of approaching this question is using the sieve of Aristosthenes, an ancient Greek mathematician. This is a systematic algorithm used for finding prime numbers. You can join along this exercise by printing out the worksheet I've attached in the info section or create your own 10 by 10 grid of numbers. You start off first by removing the number 1. Then we're going to just alternate between two steps until every square is coloured. So step A is we colour in yellow the smallest available number to indicate that that is prime. So 2 here is a prime number. Next, step B, we're going to remove all the multiples of the prime that we've just found. So we're going to remove all the multiples of 2. You can see that I've greyed out all the even numbers. With step B completed, we go back to step A. A colour in yellow, the smallest number that is left, and that is the number 3. So 3 is a prime number. Then we're going to swing to step B. We're going to remove all the multiples of 3 and we're going to grey them out. There we go. All the multiples of 3 have been removed. Pause the video here and try to complete this algorithm. If you're done, your colored list should look like this. 
there are 25 boxes in yellow indicating the prime numbers. The grayed out boxes are the composite numbers. And one, one is just one. It's a special number, which is why we have colored it red. So the answer to activity one is that there are 25 prime numbers in total below 100, and we can use the sieve of Eratosthenes to find them. Now we move on to the fundamental theorem of arithmetic that states that every positive integer can be represented as a unique product of prime factors. Take the number 24. It can be represented as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. We can also represent this as 2 to the power of 3 times 3. This superscript 3 here is an index notation, and it's an easy way to say that 2 is multiplied by itself three times. What about the number 61? Well, 61 is a prime number, so 61 is just 61. What about 240? Now, for bigger numbers like 240, it might be useful to use a ladder frame to organize our working. So 240, we're going to just try the ascending orders of prime numbers. So can 240 be divided by 2? Yes, it can. So we put 2 on the left side. 240 divided by 2 gives us 120. 120 can still be divided by 2, gives us 60. 60 can still be divided by 2, that gives us 30. 30 divided by 2 gives us 15. 15 no longer can be divided by 2. So we're going to try the next prime number, 3. 3 would give us 5. 5 can't be divided by 3, but 5 is itself a prime number. So 5 divided by 5 gives us 1. And we'll stop when this ladder frame reaches 1. So we can record the prime factors. 240 is equal to 2 multiplied by itself 4 times, times 3, times 5. Now, a commonly asked question by students is why 1 is not a prime number. And I'm going to give you two reasons. The first reason, let's look at a question. Let's look at a case where 1 is a prime number. How would you then express 6 as a product of prime factors? If we use the ladder frame that we used in the previous question, well, 6 can be divided by 2, that gives us 3. 3 can be divided by 3, that gives us 1. Now, if 1 is a prime number, then 1 can be divided by 1, that gives us 1. 1 can still be divided by 1, that still gives us 1. And you're going to see that this is going to be quite irritating because this goes on forever. So if we represent 6, 6 is equal to 2 times 3 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Where are you going to stop? This is no longer a unique product of prime factors. The second reason is that a lot of prime number theorems do not work with 1. So mathematicians long ago decided to exclude 1 from the prime number series. So let's check your understanding with checkpoint 2. Express the following numbers as a product of prime factors. Give your answers in index notation. Pause the video here and give these questions a good try. Let's go through the answers. 504 is equal to 2 to the power of 3 times 3 squared times 7. 1274 is equal to 2 times 7 squared times 13. And 2046 is equal to 2 times 3 times 11 times 31. I'm going to leave in the info section a link to a website hosting an applet that will randomly generate prime factorization questions for your self-practice of this topic. Before we end, let's reflect on the success criteria that we set out at the start of the lesson. Are you now able to list out the factors of a natural number? Are you able to list out all the prime numbers below 100? And are you able to express a natural number as a product of its prime factors? If you have any questions on this lesson, post them in the comment section below. We have come to the end of part one on prime factors. 
Stay tuned to the next episode on using prime factorization to find the lowest common multiple and the highest common factor. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more math videos. Have a great day of learning.